In the rainforest of Chiapas, Mexico, there is a small group of seven or eight hundred Mayan descendants called Lacandones. They have inhabited this location for about 300 years, having arrived from the Yucatan Peninsula and the adjoining lowlands. What makes the Lacandones unique, as well as appealing, is that they were never captured and influenced by the Spanish conquistadors, making them the only indigenous group in this region that was able to maintain their traditional customs and religion. Many anthropologists have traced these customs and religion back to the ancient Mayan Indians, considered to be one of the most advanced civilizations of Mesoamerica. The classic Maya period flourished from about 250 AD until the 10th century, producing the incredible stone cities of Palenque, Bonampak, and Yashilan, all in the eastern part of Chiapas. The Mayan culture produced an accurate calendar, along with complex systems of astronomy, mathematics, writing, and religion. Sometime between 700 and 900 AD, these cities were mysteriously abandoned, with its inhabitants receding into the surrounding jungle. Robert Bruce, a linguist and anthropologist who studied the La Condones for about 40 years beginning in the mid-1950s, contends that the northern La Condones are the direct descendants of the ancient Maya of Palenque. He referred to them as the last lords of Palenque. The La Condones referred to themselves as Hachwinik, which means the real or true people. They, they had answers for uh, their life from the jungle, you know. The jungle has a spirit, and this, uh, this is the reason uh, uh, many, many people uh, uh, like Mexicans coming to Chiapas, interesting to, to, to stay with them, to have contact with Lacandons, because they, Lacandon people, they transmit it in your spirit, very peaceful, uh, the peace, you know. And Lacandon looks so very simple, but they are very, very deep, you know. They have very deep spirit. The first documented reference to the modern Lacandones occurred in the 1780s when a parish priest discovered a small group of Indians near Palenque. The Lacandones were rediscovered in the 19th century by loggers, explorers, and anthropologists. By the turn of the century, these Indians were starting to be photographed and written about, and a romantic myth of the Lacandones had begun to be created. The images included being hidden deep in the forest and isolated from the rest of the world, living a sustainable life in harmony with the jungle, and practicing an ancient religion that could be traced directly back to the great Mayan civilization. The La Condones became more widely publicized in the mid-1940s when Franz and Gertrude Dubiblom made expeditions into the rainforest. Franz Blom, an archaeologist, had explored many of the ruins in the area beginning in the 1920s. Trudy Blom made friends with the Indians she encountered and used her camera to record the compelling images of La Condone lives. During this period, the Mexican government's land reform policies encouraged other indigenous people to move into uninhabited portions of the rainforest in between La Condone settlements. These policies would have a far-reaching negative impact on the jungle ecology. The La Condones responded by moving their settlements into more central locations. The southern La Condones moved close to the ruins of Bonampak in a settlement called La Canha Chan Sayab. The majority of these La Condones later converted to Christianity with its promise of modern medicine, security, and redemption. 
In the process, they gave up their traditions, sold mahogany trees to the government-sponsored loggers, and made their community a center for tourism. The northern Lacandones made their settlements near the shores of Lake Naha and Lake Mensabok, closer to the ruins of Palenque. The group in Naha maintained their ancient practices under the spiritual leadership of Chanquin Viejo. For example, Naha is not touristic in the north, north of the jungle, you know. Naha, Mezabok, is still the Lacandon peoples, they have the the, the, the God house, you know, they are continuous in their traditions, customs, opposite than the south, like Bonampak, you know, in Yaxilan, Lacanhach and Sayap. This, uh, this, uh, this, group, this uh, Lacandon group in this, from the south, they, they, don't, uh, they don't have anymore the God house, you know, they lost traditions because very, very touristic. I am not, uh, I am not against the uh, tourism, but uh, it's, good, uh, it's good for indigenous the tourism. But it's very important the tourist people to respect their, their traditions, their rules of communities. Navolom is not uh, just a museum, you know. Navolom uh, is the culture center for uh, Mayan studies. Uh, very important uh, people like uh, prime ministers, ambassadors, um, governors, presidents are uh, coming to to stay in Avolom because they are interesting to learn more about uh, Indian cultures and the uh, and no and they and the important people they know Navolom have connection with the Mayans. And Navolom is dedicated to preserve the Mayan culture. It's not involved in the religions, the politics, you know. It's uh, dedicated to help uh, Mayan, Mayan people. During the next 30 years, Naha was regularly visited by anthropologists, archaeologists, writers, photographers, filmmakers, and spiritual seekers, all looking to learn more about the Lacandones, especially about Chanquin Viejo. It was a way to witness and experience what it was like to live a tranquil and simple life in the jungle. In addition to observing and or taking part in religious ceremonies, visitors were impressed by the sustainable agricultural practices. The Lacandones demonstrated how man could live in harmony with nature by transforming small areas of natural rainforest into harvestable plots then ultimately allowing the rainforest to regenerate itself. Here's how it works. The plots are called milpas, or cultivated fields, and are started by burning the rainforest vegetation in the area to be cultivated. These fields are usually planted with a wide variety of crops, including corn, squash, beans, chili, yuca, manioc, yams, sugarcane, cotton, and tobacco. For the milpa to yield, it must be weeded daily. The Lacandones usually do this in the morning when the sun is low. A milpa is productive for about five years. At that point, tree crops are planted. Tree crops include oranges, avocados, and bananas. The tree crops produce for five to 15 years before being overgrown with pristine rainforest. Then the cycle can be repeated. During the 1960s and 70s, the deforestation of the jungle accelerated and Trudy Blum was there to capture the images. A road was bulldozed to carry out the huge quantity of mahogany trees that were cut. This logging road connected Naha to civilization, Palenque to the north and Ocosingo to the south. It also brought more missionaries into the area. The Lacandones of Naha were in danger of losing their traditions as they moved into the modern world. Chanquin Viejo continued to teach the ancient wisdom, knowing how important it was to pass on that knowledge. He often told visitors that when the last tree was cut, the forest would be destroyed and the world would come to an end. 